Hey there YouTube, welcome to another Tech Me Out video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when new videos come out. In today's video, I would like to share with you my way of doing firewall rules in Unify. Now, my way is something that works very well for me. I think it's the best way to really keep in control over the traffic that goes through your network. I hope it will work just as well for you. Let's jump right into the computer and see how I manage firewall rules in Unify and I hope you will like it. Let's jump right in. All right, guys, so we are at the computer and I'm about to show you my way of doing firewall rules in Ubiquiti Unify. And the reason I, I like this method so much and I uh, am sort of promoting it and sharing it with you guys is because it creates a default situation, a starting situation where everything is blocked. No one can go anywhere, which if you're familiar with other vendors firewall, this is exactly the same in, in, 40, in 40 gates, in PFSense. The default state is everything is blocked until you define, and this is the beauty, until you define what can go where exactly. Now, no one is stopping you to define that everything can go anywhere. It's just you shouldn't do it. This situation gives you control, complete control over what can go where in your network. For example, I have uh, several VLANs. Uh, that I consider is internal and I have some VLANs that I consider external for example an IoT VLAN which I completely uh, uh, separate from my internal VLANs and I don't want any connection going, going between them but I am allowing for example from the IoT network a single uh, uh, port uh, on a single host to go through which is my Plex server which is exactly the example I'm going to give here in order, to, in order to demonstrate. So first of all, let me show you how I set up my firewall on Unify. Let's go to settings and firewall and firewall rules. And we're uh, focusing on LAN in. That means whatever is inbound towards our LAN. And as you can see, I have several rule defined. And remember that a, a firewall rule processing is sequential. That means it's a, a processed from the top, bottom. So the first thing I have defined is the blocking of all inter VLAN routing. And as you can see, the source is RFC. It's a group I created, RFC 1918, and the destination is 1918 as well. Let's see what this group is all about, this group. So I have created a group called RFC 1918, and this is actually the, the standard uh, um, internal IP addresses that are not routable on the internet. The, uh, the uh, 192.168, 172.16, and 10. Dot, these are all uh, 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 IP addresses that are internal networks. So I have defined a rule using this group that blocks everything coming from an internal network to an internal network. It's blocked, not going anywhere. And I've, after I set up my, my uh, allowing rules, as you can see, the action is drop. And let's see how I created this uh, rule. The action is drop. I gave it a name that uh, for me gives, gives away what the rule does. The action is drop all protocols from RFC 1918 to RFC 1918 and, uh, and save, and th that created the rule. And after I created my allowing rules, I of course set this rule to be on the bottom because everything else I want to be processed before this rule. And if uh, the firewall find, finds an exact match, it will allow, uh, it will allow the traffic. I also defined a rule to allow traffic between the VLANs that I consider internal. So again, I created a group and let's see this group again, Wasteland VLANs. I defined the VLANs that I consider to be internal 
okay? And then I created a rule to allow the action is except from these villains going to these villains. That's for me an okay situation and I'm allowing it. What I'm also allowing is traffic from my IoT network. And just as a reference, if I'll go to the networks, you'll see that I have an IoT network created with this subnet. So in my firewall rule, I am allowing from the IoT network just to my Plex server. So let's see how this uh, uh, rule looks like. The action is accept. And this is where the magic happens from network IoT. I'm only allowing the traffic to a specific host inside my uh, internal uh, uh, network and only in a single port, which I have also defined. Uh, so from the IoT network only to a specific host, only to a specific port, I'm allowing it. And let's again, let's see the port which I've created. As you can see, the group type is port. And this is the Plex port. And I'm only allowing it to a certain host, which is this one, which I also defined as an exact IP address of the host. So I created the rule. And then you might ask, well, if you already defined this rule, why did you define the next rule, which is allowing a, a, a Plex traffic to go to the IoT network? Well, that's because traffic must be allowed to reach the destination and it also must be allowed from the destination to come back to the source. And this is, uh, uh, this is exactly why if I disable one of these rules, I completely break the chain, for example. And this is what gives me a, a, a lot of control because I can disable anyone. If something happens and I want to cut the communication, I only need to disable any one of these rules and the communication will stop working. So let's take it to the real world. And I have a host, a virtual machine that is connected to my IoT network. And if you can see this uh, IP address should be in the 99 range. And this is exactly right. 192.168.99.80. So this is on my IoT network. And if I open a web browser and I try to, uh, uh, to go to anyone of my internal hosts, for example, let's try to go to my Synology device that holds my uh, uh, Plex uh, uh, installation. And I'm not defining the, uh, 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 the Plex port for this example. Let's see if I get the web management interface. I don't. All right. So if I add the Plex port, which I allowed in my firewall rule, I do get access. That means the rule is working. And now let's try something else. Let's try disabling any one of these rules that, uh, uh, that are in charge of allowing this communication. I'm disabling it and save. So as you can see, there's no uh, longer a check mark here. Let's open the web browser again and let's go to the same address and the same port and let's see what we get nothing at all this means that the firewall rules are functioning and they give us real control over what goes where so what i'm going to do right now just in order to show you what's the process i'm going to take this rule and this rule and delete both and we will recreate them together so I'm going to click on delete right here and delete right here. And I'm going to create a new rule and I'm going to call it allow IoT tuplex. The action, the status is on, the action is accept, all right? And now we need to uh, define the source network, sorry, will be IoT, that's great. And the destination will be my 
Plex server host and the port will be my Plex port and save. And now this rule is created on the bottom. So I'll have to move it up here and I'll create the reverse rule now, which is allow Plex to IoT. Again, it's on, the action is accept, and I'm going to do the exact reverse. This means that I will select my Plex host, which is my Synology DS920, and only from the Plex port, I will allow it to go back to my IoT network. Great, again, I'm going to put this rule underneath the rule that we have already, uh, already created. Remember, the processing of the firewall rules is from the top towards the bottom. So now everything should be working again and I can test it by going to my Windows 10 device and I have the desired address already in my address bar. Sorry, let's load it again. Seems to be stuck, no problem. All right, so looks like Windows updates killed, uh, killed us uh, in the perfect timing, but now the machine is back on. Let's maximize it and log back in. Remember, we have defined the rules back, and now we want to open a browser and see if we get access to our Plex server. All right. Let's start by opening a browser. And let's try Great, that means the firewall rules are indeed working again. And this means that the uh, go to rule is working and the come back, the reverse rule is also working and we get access to our Plex server. That means that everything is working exactly as expected. So let me close out this real, real quick. So this is exactly how I created my other rules. For example, allowing from internal networks to go to my printers. The printers in my house are connected wirelessly to my IoT network. So this is exactly how I created all my other rules. And then I created blocking rules from my IoT network to my internal lab, internal VLANs, and also from my lab to my internal VLANs. Just this, these rules, both of these rules are just let's say a precaution or something like that. But this is how I manage firewall rules. I think that this method, I see a lot of methods out there on YouTube. They're all valid. I'm not discrediting anyone, but I think that my method right here is the most secure because it starts out as nothing goes anywhere and it gives you, it forces you to be in control and define what exactly you are allowing to go where and create also a, re a reverse rule. So complete control and the most secure. So I hope you liked my method. I hope it will serve you well as well as it served me. If you like this video, please click the like button, share it. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when new videos come out. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you, I will see you all in the next video. Take care guys.